we have a huge project pipeline ahead of us to deliver on with the V236. What I'm interested to learn from all of you is what does it take from a full value chain perspective to get ready? There are literally thousands of people involved in this project. The, the industry is different from what we knew uh, 10 years ago, so, so um, now it's all about build out. So in terms of scale up, as we keep saying, I think uh, modularization and industrialization are, are basically two of the key words in, on the technology side. Um, what I mean by industrialization is that we are looking a lot into how we can share designs, share components between different uh, platforms, so between onshore and offshore. That, uh, that actually helps DITA and the team on the procurement side so that we can, we can combine volumes, get more buying power, create greater volumes for our suppliers by actually using some of the same components in our onshore and offshore turbines. It's also a way to make sure that we have reliability because it gives us more experience, more uh, track record, and, and we, can, we can sort of share those learnings. I think we are making huge investments into V236 uh, and it's not only investment in money, it's investment in colleagues, in teams, uh, in hiring, in recruiting and, and therefore it's important that we, uh, that we create uh, some kind of you know, longer life cycles on these investments to get the benefits of scale, not only from a financial point of view but from a quality and, and sustainability uh, point of view, right? And the industrialization of this product is also unprecedented. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have been introducing a lot of the technology advantages, also meaning that our development process is actually being validated to a level that we have uh, really improved over the last many, many years, giving us a lot of certainty in what we're doing in our operations. From a commercial perspective, I think what is also important when building on, a, on a, or achieving a scalability is also standardization. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in, in that, uh, I feel as in sales, we have a, a lot of responsibility uh, in that because uh, we need to balance the request from a customer base that might request uh, customization to an extent maybe uh, beyond what would be wished for and also trying to find what it would be the most optimal from a standardization and cost down and optimization standpoint. And perhaps the, in line of what you were mentioning, Dieter, I think the marginal improvement might not actually bring in, in, a, in a bigger picture such, uh, such a big value as it might be perceived uh, in the beginning. So I think this is also something that I see we have a responsibility towards our customer and explaining why sometimes we might not be uh, able to accommodate certain requests because uh, this will not be um, helping the industry and the, and the industrialization and the scalability and cost reduction they're also looking for. So how is Vestas working with our offshore technology to ensure that we're ready to scale and establish industry maturity? First of all, we are really happy with what we are seeing from the prototype. Things are going very well. We are we're learning a lot. I would say it's the first product where we have truly designed for service from the very beginning. So already when we were doing the first conceptual drawings of the turbine, we had uh, service experts in there together with the designers to figure out how do we best lay out everything so that it, it, becomes, uh, it becomes easy to work with. Um, and you mentioned that we are getting positive feedback from the service team. Mm. Is that true, Mio? Yes, I think it's very important for me, me and Christian having several discussions around exactly what it is he's finding out. Um, having that experience from, from the past technology as well, understanding that we need to be part of the development from a service uh, so that it's developed to our needs. Uh, ultimately, it is the service technicians and our customers that need to operate it for, for 25, 30 years. Uh, you mentioned space. Um, I've heard some technicians talking about being lost in, in the nacelle, right, which is a, a unique way of describing how, how big it is. There's, there's a lot of place to move around in there, but also some of the, the clever solutions we've put in there in terms of making uh, replaceable co components very accessible and so on. We're getting really, really good feedback on that. So, um, so we, have, I mean, we have a really positive spirit about where we are right now. Of course, we also need to look at the mid and long term, looking out there of saying, where will we attract uh, the, the future generation of technicians and, and, and colleagues? Um, through, through work with universities and colleges, uh, educating um, and, and, and pitching the excellent opportunities that, that actually being an offshore technician brings uh, will be quite critical. And I think 
with, with the initial projects now in 25, 26 and 27 across three continents, uh, we, we need to start that work now um, because uh, the scaling of, of the industry is, is so significant um, that we will not be able to catch up if we don't start early. And that needs not only going to be ours, that needs going to be our customers as well.